it's Dave and you're watching Harpoon Dreams. It is something like six, six o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's Veterans Day, I have off, so I am headed over to the club. Um, I'm really pleased with myself. I got my butt out of bed, as you can see before. There's still stars in the sky. It's still dark and I'm halfway to the club and I will get there exactly sunrise and uh, I will start moving the boat toward the water and uh, bending on the mainsail. So I hope everything goes well. We'll see. So the problem here is that um, the right way for one person to lower this mast and then step the mast again is to use the jib halyard through that block tied to the jib and then to use it through that um, forward block back to the cockpit where the person can lower the mast with this hand working the halyard and then support the mast as it comes back and lay it gently into the crutch at the back. The problem is I don't have nearly enough jib halyard to accomplish that. So I'm going to have to use the direct force on the jib halyard and I won't be able to stand behind the mast so I'm worried that it's going to drop too hard but I don't really see any sort of alternative to that except to before the mast starts coming down to quickly walk behind it but then I have no halyard to help me ease it down I have to shoulder the whole thing it's a little bit too much as it's coming down to try and shoulder it Yeah, I'm just going to have to uh, wing it because I, I have to take it down and there's no one here to help me. So I'm just going to have to wing it. As I was doing this, I wasn't sure I needed to do this, but as I was doing this, I realized that my jib halyard had somehow become misrigged and that if I had gotten out on the water to try to raise my jib, I wouldn't have been able to raise my jib because the jib halyard was run wrong. And I don't really understand how that happened because I did it the other day, but sometime between now and then, it got messed up. So I'm trying to do is make absolutely sure that both of my halyards are run correct are rigged correctly and that they're not going to be tangled in the shrouds when I go to step the mast. So I'm just putting this here for safekeeping. So this part of the main is running outside of the spreaders and outside of the shrouds. It goes over the top of the mast to the back of the mast behind everything. There's nothing between the main halyard and the mast. The jib halyard, I'm doing it in the opposite manner. There's nothing in between the jib halyard and the um, mast on the uh, fore side. So I'm just going to rig these here for safekeeping while I go to, now the next thing I need to make sure of, first I'm going to seat the mast, then I'm going to make sure that the forestay is available to me and there's nothing between the mast, the front side of the mast and the forestay. So first I'm going to put it in its tabernacle. 
You know what a tabernacle is? It's where this part of the mast sits right here. This is called a tabernacle. I'm not sure if you were able to see that. So I'm gonna ease it back in the crutch. I'm gonna move the bang out of the way. I maybe should have disconnected. All right, now it's seated. And I can go ahead and what the hell's with my phone? Oh, it's my normal workday alarm. That's funny. On a normal workday, I'd be getting up out of bed. Well, actually, I'd be snoozing for another half hour. This is great. I'm so glad I got out here this morning. It is a beautiful day. The only problem here is the lake is so low, there's not a really good opportunity for me to put the boat in the water and to be able to sail around without getting stuck out on the open lake. All right. Let's see how I'm going to Hey, the mass is fully stepped. And, uh, not quite sure why, but when I returned to replace this pin, this four stay was tighter than it had been before. So I had to loosen the turnbuckle while I was holding it. So now I'm going to retighten it a little bit. And it, it looks like it's configured well with the equal amount on both sides. That's very important on this boat. Otherwise, you will not have enough space to tighten your turnbuckle and adjust your forestay. If one of them is um, has more threading than the other, it's not a good thing. And that can easily happen if you disconnect this and then just turn, turn the turnbuckle. You can easily end up in a situation. So, uh, that's... Let me see if I have a tool that will help me with that. Something I'm gonna have to fix right away. Um, it looks like maybe there's just, uh, yeah, there's some nuts missing here, that's all. It's not, uh, it's not a big deal. Just there's nuts missing there, that's all. I don't know how that could have happened. But uh, maybe I'll take that opportunity to, these still feel like they're in pretty good shape. But it's just curious how both sides are missing the nuts that hold them in place. How about the back end here? They have nuts that are coming off. So I'll go buy some uh, locking nuts. All right, now I'm just going to go park. The boat looks like it's fine where it is. It's a good day. I think everything's going great. So we're sailing. Unfortunately, it's not real sailing because I'm unable to get my centerboard to drop. It's jammed. So, I'm trying to sail upwind with no centerboard. So the best thing I can figure on what to do is just to gain as much speed as I can. Uh, keep the mainsail, I'm only sailing with a mainsail. Keep it sheeted in. Push myself through these tacks. The rotter came up. myself through the tacks with the by sculling and then gain as much speed as possible across this little cove the wind is blowing into this cove so I'm not worried about getting out on the lake and, and being stuck without a motor 
first off, this boat responds very well to sculling with the rudder. And secondly, um, it's going to be real easy to sail back into the cove. And I probably will be unable to sail out of this cove. So I'm not real worried about getting out there. That's not a big problem, I think. <laughs> 